All right, I'm going to start with a story because that's my favorite way to start. In 2010, Ricky Weiland had just gotten home from the Army National Guard. He had done a tour, and he was home, and he was driving in his car, and he was in a very serious car accident, one he was not able to recover from. His parents did not realize that he had registered to be an organ donor. And he saved, a lot, I don't know how many, but he saved the lives of multiple people through his sacrifice of allowing his body to be an organ donor. His parents, Rick and Debbie, obviously very upset. He was only like 22 or something. Um, but his heart went to a gentleman in New York. And so after they put the heart in that gentleman, they allowed Rick and Debbie to go and meet him. And while they were there, they took a recording of Ricky's heart in this other man and gave that recording to their, his parents. And they really treasured this heartbeat to be, they felt like it was a lifeline to their son, a way to remember him and have a kind of a piece of him still with them. And so they, they realized how much that helped them get through the grieving process. And so they started this ministry where they make, they call them heartbeat bears. And so anyone who's uh, the family of an organ donor, they record, if they can, they record the heartbeat of that person before they harvest the, the organs. And then they put them in, it's kind of like, you know, how Build-A-Bear has a little heart beating thing in it. They put it in a bear and they give it to the family. Well, in 2000, let's say four years ago, 2016, my assistant principal at my school, um, Steve Hart, his daughter was murdered downtown. She was run o intentionally run over by a car. And she died. And she had registered also, unbeknownst to her family, as an organ donor. And, she, and they, the Hart family, ironically, received one of these heartbeat bears from the Weiland family. And he talks, he will, he will talks to us about how that really, like, it just, it's a piece of Maddie they still have with them. And I love, I love that when people come through something dark, oftentimes their reaction is to move into action. When people come out of a dark season, their, their response to that is, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to use my pain to do something about it for other people. And, and we see examples of this all the time. A friend of mine, she was a, a technology teacher and her daughter was born blind, so she became a visually impaired teacher. People like lose someone to cancer or whatever and they become doctors, you know, oncologists and things like that. So we see it all the time. And as I was thinking about what to, what to preach this week, I, I said to the Lord, I'm like, what should I preach this week? And he said, when we come out of a season of darkness, we are called into action. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. So then I started reading. I w it was easy to find. I just flipped right to the back of all the Gospels and read like the last chapter. <laughs> you know, what, what did it look like for Jesus? What were his last moments on earth? What did he say to his disciples? And over and over I see that he didn't say, we had a great run, guys. Now just hang out till recreation. See you later. No, he, he exhorted them into action. And as I've been reading, I, I keep feeling like God calls me to read John 15 right now. And as I read it, it's, it's what he was talking to his disciples about during the Last Supper. And it's an exhortation to get out there, to love and to do. So I thought we would look at some of those verses today. So, in Mark 16, he said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all of creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. They will drink deadly poison that will not hurt them. They will place their hand on the sick and they will be made well. Now, A number one, I really hope that I don't have to handle any snakes. <laughs> I'm not a fan of snakes. I prefer to skip that part of it personally. But <clears throat> I love that this is, this is an exhortation to get out there. This is an exhortation to go and do. Not just sit and believe and just tell your kids. He wants us to go out and do. He wants us to be healing the sick. Not just be like, oh, I'm going to sit with you while you're sick. No, he wants us to get out there and heal the sick. He wants us to get out there and be performing miracles. He wants us to drive out demons. He wants us to, you know, speak in tongues. He wants us to do these things that to us seem crazy. To me, the idea, like, when I first heard it of speaking in tongues, I was like, whoa. 
That's weird. But now, like, I've been around places where that happens, and you feel the spirit in that space when that happens. And it is, the first time you experience it, it is kind of weird. But you feel the presence of the Lord in that. And, and we are called to do that. This isn't something that happens in recreation. This is something that should be happening now. When we pray, we don't just pray to make ourselves feel that better. We are praying because we're actually putting an expectation on the Lord to come and do something. In Matthew, um, Jesus' final words were, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Make disciples of the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. I love that he says, I've been given all authority in heaven. And he's basically saying, I've been given all authority, now I'm giving it to you. Because Jesus was one man. And he talks about, I've done great things, you're going to do even greater things. You know, Jesus was one man. He could only help all, he only had enough energy to help the people who came to him every day. But he was training his disciples to do the exact same thing so that when he was gone, they would train and they would train and it would be the snowball effect of all these people doing what Jesus did. We are given the authority to do what Jesus did. We are given the authority to heal people. We are given the authority to perform miracles. We are given the authority, we were told to go and make disciples. A disciple is like, it's like, I'm, I should be so enthusiastic. Have you ever, like, read a book or gone to a restaurant and it's so good, you can't help but tell everybody about it? Like, you just want to tell everybody, you got to read this book. you got to go to this restaurant. The food is so good. That is what making a disciple is. It's creating that level of enthusiasm for the Lord. So we should be so enthusiastic about God and what he's done in our lives and who he is that we should be just bursting with it. We can't wait to tell people about it. And we can't wait to, like, talk about him or, like, invite people to church or whatever. And it's hard because in our culture, that's not socially acceptable. In our culture, it is not socially acceptable to walk up to people and be like, let me tell you about my God. To people are like, uh-uh, no, 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 we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. But that's what we're called to do. We are called to be so enthusiastic about how good God has been to us that we just can't help but go and tell people about it. And, we're, and, and hopefully that leads then to them receiving the Lord and getting baptized and, and growing naturally in that way. And then the last one he says, but you will receive power from the Holy Spirit as he comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. The Holy Spirit, after Jesus left, the Holy Spirit came onto the disciples with power. We have authority and a power in the name of Jesus Christ. And so when we pray for people, we need to pray, think about that. Like, I have authority to do these things. And so when I pray, I'm praying in authority that it's going to happen. When I pray for someone to be healed, I'm praying in authority that that healing might, should happen. Like, when we pray for people to be healed with cancer, we're praying that they are healed from cancer. We're not just praying, like, Lord, just help them feel better as they die. No. We are given the exhortation to pray expecting miracles. And we see it. We see When we pray, you know, Adam Clary will tell you the miracles happen. Those of you who know Adam or you've heard us praying about Adam, he will tell you the miracles happen. The doctors did not give him a good prognosis. And we pray hard, and he is living and with his family right now. He is celebrating Easter with his family today because of prayers. And that's what we're called to do. We are called to get out there, to make disciples, to baptize, to pray with authority. And so I'm giving you guys, if you didn't know it, I am releasing over you the power and authority to make your prayers come true. Pray expecting it to happen. None of these, I call them mamsy pamsy prayers. None of these mamsy pamsy like, Lord, could you maybe make them feel a little bit better? Uh-uh. No, I pray that they are healed. I pray that they come to the Lord. I pray that, I pray that the Lord will come back to our nation. I pray for that all the time. I pray that we will become a Christian nation again. And we've kind of lost sight of that. But I don't, I think that that's, I don't think it's beyond what can happen. It happened over and over in the Bible that people would forget. 
And they would, a remnant would call out to the Lord, and he would come, and then they would all come to know who God was. Why can't that happen now? So I say we pray with authority. When you pray, expect it to happen. And keep praying with authority and asking the Lord to come. And if it's not happening, ask him, like, am I praying wrong? Like, what do I, what do I need to do, Holy Spirit? Come and help me pray for this. Because sometimes we make prayers that maybe, like, let the Bengals win. Like, maybe that one's not a prayer that, <laughs> you know. But, like, sometimes we have to pray, Lord, change my heart. Sometimes we have anger or unforgiveness or frustration or guilt. And we say, Lord, come and change my heart. Have your way. Let your way be done. But he wants us to have a say-so. And so I am calling us to action, just like Jesus did as he left. He didn't rise from the dead just to perform a magic trick. Cool trick, Jesus? No. He rose from the dead so he could show us that the Lord has all authority in heaven and on earth. And he is giving that to us. So let us go make disciples of nations, baptize, pray with authority, perform miracles, and show the love of the Lord, show the love of Jesus to everyone. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right. It's a short one. I kind of missed a part of it, and then I was too far gone. So. <laughs> I don't know why I bring this paper. <laughs> All right. We're going to sing if you guys want to stand up. God, you are good and holy. Lord Jesus, all authority in heaven and on earth is yours, and you love to co-labor with us. You love to come where we point our finger and say, Lord Jesus, come into the situation. Lord Jesus, you know our hearts. You know how much we love you. You know when we're far away from you, and even when we are far away, you still want to be with us. You're always there waiting for us. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come over all of us this week and show us where to go. Show us how to make disciples. Help us to show our enthusiasm for you to those around us. Give us the prayers to pray. Put your power and authority behind our prayers. May we see the manifestation of your power. May we see miracles happen. May we be instruments of healing. May we believe that you are good, that you do all that you say. Help us, Lord, in our unbelief. Help us, Lord, to believe powerfully. Help us to pray powerfully. Keep us all safe. Lord Jesus, open our ears to hear you and our minds to understand you. Watch over all of our servicemen and women, all of our first responders, and all those battling this pandemic. Lord Jesus, end this pandemic, and may we come back to a new and better normal. Come over our nation and give, give wisdom and discernment and humility to our leaders of our nation, of our cities, of our states, of our houses, and of our work. You are holy, Lord Jesus, and we love you, and we're looking forward to having more and more praises of yours to say every Sunday when we come together. We're looking forward, Lord, to celebrating the miracles that you're going to do in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And if anyone here has not accepted the Lord as your Savior and you want to, you can come down after service and have a chat with us in the board. We will. We'll have a, we would love to talk to you about that. I hope you guys have a great Easter.
anybody wants pictures? Yes, and if anyone wants pictures, family pictures, Dale's got his fancy camera, and he'll gladly take some family pictures um, of you after service. So I hope you guys all have a great week. The end. Break.
for her, and they will wish. Yeah, what do we do? More right. paper with the gossip, please. Great. So, can you? Yeah, I got, I got it all. I found our pot holders for yesterday. Oh, they're bad. They're old, they're thin, they're, they're worn out. Our pot holders downstairs. Uh, oh, now I gotta start looking. To I know. John's mom always made them. You know, I still have the ones that she made. Oh wow! And um, of course, they're not in the best of shape, well, but they work. Yeah. They work. <laughs> I'm trying to decide. I'd like to work on the website, which I prefer to have the big laptop for. But if I take it. Then I have to bring it to church on Sunday. <laughs> Next Sunday. I was going to take a big laptop and work on the website. Yeah.